Joining us now with more on the two-day conference on Iran and security in the Middle East is founder and executive director of the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies, Dr. Martin Sherman. Dr. Sherman, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for the invitation. All right, so let, let's just begin with what kind of outcomes do you expect to actually come out of the Warsaw Conference? Well, I, I'm, I'd be surprised if there are actually concrete results, but I think it's much more a matter of atmosphere. Uh, first of all, on the domestic political front for Netanyahu, of course, this is a great choreography yeah, a to, uh, leading up to the elections push. and sort of you know, places him on the stage as a global statesman facing all petty, uh, petty uh, recriminations against him about uh, Does champagne. It, doesn't it also kind of make him look a little silly being that he's the only head of state really there? No, I, I, I don't think so because I think what you're seeing here are tectonic changes in mm. the affiliations and associations on the international stage. And I think in many ways Israel is the focal point of it, in some ways at least. I mean, there, there, there are numerous ways to, to, to analyze what's going on. You have the rifts in the EU, uh, and then you have, as I say, these different kind of affiliations that are coalescing around this, uh, this uh, um, conference. And then, of course, you have uh, Iran. And in the background, you have the issue of uh, the Trump peace plan. So, uh, yeah, I think that for Netanyahu, this is a good stage for him to uh, show off his, uh, his uh, skills as, as a statesman. Um, and I, 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 th I think it's an interesting development. I mean, no one would have ever imagined this you know, two or three years ago. So, okay, but again, you know, on that note, no one would have imagined this, this meeting two or three years ago, but really what's the difference between now and two or three years ago when we have meetings like this? Because you have, you have Turkey, Iran, and, and Russia meeting in Moscow on Thursday. Uh, the, the interesting thing is here, yeah, who is affiliating themselves with those people by not coming is the sure. west, western part of, 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 of Europe. And, uh, um, you know, you're, you're seeing a, a clear division now within, within the EU, which you didn't see a few years ago, on issues like multiculturalism, immigration, well, but, but even national identity. And, and, and so, so you know, in many ways, I mean, there was an article recently, just a few days ago, in the Wall Street Journal, which talks about, uh, I don't know whether it's a good term to use in the era of Me Too, but, but Europe is becoming a bit effeminate. Uh, it's, uh, it's declining economically. Uh, it's losing its clout uh, uh, in, the, in the political field. Uh, countries uh, like Japan and India and China are becoming far, far more important. Uh, on the other hand, you're having a sort of ascendant um, Central and Eastern European countries who oppose the line on, on, on a whole line of, of, of topics, as I said before, immigration, the danger of Islam, national mm -hmm. identity, open borders, etc., etc. So, so I'm not sure that there'll be concrete, actionable decisions coming out of it. But, but, I, but I certainly think that it, as, as a, an indicator of changed atmosphere, it's a significant event. All right. Well, I, and, and back to Iran, though, you know, and, and uh, you know, peace in the region, which is really the core focus of this uh, Warsaw Conference. You have Israel and the United States, which have been pushing very hard for other countries to pull out of the JCPOA, to sanction Iran, to act in Syria. But we have the EU and Poland uh, especially, which is hosting, saying, you know, we're going to vote with the EU. We're not leaving the JCPOA. JCPOA. We have many countries who are, again, sending, you know, maybe not the best or top candidates in their field to this conference. Are they even taking it seriously? Well, I, th I, th I think, you know, Netanyahu was right. And as I've been said here on, on the, on the, in, in the studio a number of times before, the real issue is what happens in Iran. And then Netanyahu is right. The economic sanctions are having a great debilitating effect on Iran. It's, uh, it's uh, curtailing its efforts mm. in Syria. Uh, there's economic crisis. There's a, there's a crisis with the currency. There's ethnic strike. And there's a huge water crisis in Iran. So I, I think that as, as Iran begins to, to weaken, I think you'll probably find that more and more countries find it easier to break away from the agreement. All right. Well, with that, thank you so much, Dr. Sherman, for coming in. Thank you.